Hey guys, Josh here, and in this video I'll be giving you some useful beginner tips and tricks to get started in the Wild Mender. This video is sponsored by Quali, the publisher of Wild Mender, and if you don't know what this game is, it's a survival crafting game where your goal is to build around an oasis and bring life back to the desert. It supports up to 4 players in online multiplayer, you can also spend a lot of time exploring, crafting and decorating your oasis, and it's a lot of fun. The game has very positive reviews on Steam and is currently 20% off as part of the Steam Winter Sale, so it's the perfect time to get it and play with your friends and family during the holidays. Check the link in the description if you're interested, but now let's talk about some tips and tricks that will make your start in this game a bit easier. My very first tip is to grow as much food as you can. As soon as you finish the tutorial, the spirit you meet in the oasis will give you a quest asking you to find amaranth seeds and to plant them. Don't take this quest lightly, it's very important as you'll be needing a lot of food in this game and surviving can be quite hard at the beginning. If you're not sure what to look for, amaranth looks like a bush with a long stem in the middle and it usually grows in a group so it shouldn't be too hard to spot. Use your spade in order to dig up the buried seeds and as tempting as it is, don't eat all of them right away. Go and plant as many as you can near your oasis and it will make the rest of your time with this game much more pleasant. You'll also come across dune grass and sunburst seeds and you may be wondering what to do with those. Well, if you plant them, over time they will transform the sand into arable soil, allowing you to grow a wider variety of plants and they will all grow faster as well. Sunburst shrubs cover a bigger area than dune grass, but I would recommend planting both in order to quickly expand your arable soil. It can be a bit hard at first to figure out what is the best spacing between each one, but don't worry, you can move any small plant or shrub, so you can space them out more later if you want. Just be careful not to space them out too much or some of the soil will revert back to sand. Once you've got some arable soil, one other thing I would recommend planting as soon as possible is oak trees. Oaks produce acorns, which you will need a ton of throughout the game, as well as runic keys that are used to open chests, often containing valuable items. Acorns are pretty rare and difficult to find, but if you're playing on the default map, there should be an oak forest not too far from your starting oasis. Use your spade to dig around the oak trees and you should be able to find maybe 2 or 3 acorns, so go ahead and plant them. It will take a while for trees to grow, but they're definitely worth it and will save you a lot of time in the long run as they will provide you with acorns regularly. Also, be mindful of where you plant your trees as they will become fairly big and unlike plants, they cannot be moved. I made the mistake of planting trees quite close to the main tree in the oasis and they're still doing fine, but it doesn't look the best and I wish I had planned things a bit better, but now the only way for me to move them would be to cut them down and plant them again. Which brings me to my next tip, whenever you plant something, make sure to look at the soil condition. On the first line, you will see the biome, which is determined by the soil type, so desert if it's sand, arable if it's dirt, and later on you'll also unlock other biomes like meadow and marsh, and certain plants are more suited to certain biomes. On the following line, you have the humidity of the soil, so that's either wet or dry. If you're planting near water, it will be wet, meaning you won't have to water that crop by hand. If you plant a crop where it's dry, you will have to give it water regularly, otherwise it will die. For this reason, I would recommend always trying to plant things on wet soil so they're easier to maintain, and don't forget you can dig canals with your spade to create irrigation systems and expand your oasis. The next line tells you what the status of the plant will be, so this goes from sickly all the way up to thriving, and that will determine the growth rate of your plant. You can also see the status of a plant at any time after you planted it, and move it if necessary later on. The only things you can't move are trees, so even if you can't find the ideal location for a plant initially, don't overthink it, it is better to still plant it now and move it later once you have a more suitable spot. Different plants will also require a different amount of space, so make sure to keep an eye for a warning when it's too crowded as that can negatively affect the growth of your plants. So there's a lot of things you should do to get your oasis going at first, and the reason why we're doing all of this is to prepare for the other big part of Wild Mender, the exploration, which I'll be covering in these next few tips. All around the world, you'll find these broken gates, and if you repair them using acorns, you will be able to teleport from one to the other using essence. The longer the distance between two gates, the more essence it will cost to teleport, and if you're confused about how to get essence, it is being generated by your plants every night, so make sure to walk around your oasis and collect these little orbs when they appear. 
A bit later, you will be able to build sigil stones that will store this essence for you. However, even if a gate is not repaired yet, it can still be useful. In fact, while you won't be able to teleport to a broken gate, you can still teleport from it. This is one of those things I really wish I had known earlier, as there were many times when I was far from the oasis and I died while trying to go back home. So if you find yourself struggling, look for the closest gate even if it's broken and if you have some essence on you, you should be able to go back home. Besides sigil gates, other things you can repair in the world are broken springs using some sandstone and essence. If you're looking for sandstone, it can usually be found around these medium-sized rocks. Once repaired, water will start flowing from these springs, just like the oasis you start at. You will be able to grow plants and everything there, but most importantly, the more springs you repair, the more places you'll have where you can refill your water bottle without having to go back home. As you explore the world of Wildmander, you'll find lots of interesting things like gates and springs, but also frogs. They will be a bit thirsty, but after giving them a drink, you can pick them up and bring them back to your oasis. Not only are frogs adorable and will add some life to your place, but they will also help you with harvesting, picking up any seeds or items that they come across. Make sure to interact with the frogs once in a while, open their mouth, and you should see some items inside the frogs that you can then transfer to your inventory. These frogs will save you a lot of time, and whenever you're looking for some food, acorns, or anything like that, there's a good chance your frogs will have some. But before you go out and try to find all of these frogs, keep an eye on the top left corner of the screen where you can see your status and weather effects. You will notice that during the daytime, sun exposure will make you thirsty and hungry extremely quickly, making it very difficult to explore for extended periods of time. If you are out during the day, try to walk beside cliffs where you can hide in the shadows, or if you can, find one of these mushrooms umbrellas that you can use to protect yourself. Ideally, however, I would strongly recommend exploring at night as the weather is not as harsh and you'll be able to achieve a lot more. Not only that, but at night you'll also be able to see ghosts who will give you skill points, a very important part of the progression in this game. If you find the nights to be a bit too short and you can't explore as much as you'd like before the sun comes out, don't forget to take a look at the difficulty settings. This menu has so many options that will allow you to tailor your experience to your preferred playstyle. Not only can you make the nights longer, but you can also give yourself the ability to keep your items after dying, decrease the rate at which your food and water meters go down, change the speed at which your plants grow, or the amount of buried items dropped, among so many other things. If there is something that you find too difficult in Wildmender or too easy, there is a good chance you can fix it in the difficulty settings. Alright, so these are some of the tips and tricks I would recommend following if you are just getting started in Wildmender. If you have already played this game and you have some more tips to share, feel free to type them down in the comments to help more people get into this game. Leave a like and subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you all in the next video.